Hi, I'm Alex Howard, and I'm here with Tanya Page from the nutrition team at the clinic. And today we're going to be talking about stomach acid and its role in ME, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, and that group of illnesses. And I think this is particularly interesting because stomach acid not working the way that it's meant to actually has a really big impact on symptoms and on people's situations. And it's actually also quite simple to treat. Um, Absolutely. So maybe a good starting point would be what stomach acid actually does, what, it, what its role is in the body. Okay, well it's got a massively fundamental role, and that role is to digest the protein from your food, uh, without which you can't grow, repair or rejuvenate. So that, that's pretty key. Um, its secondary but really, really important role is also t for immunity because essentially the stomach is the first line of defence of the immune system. So anything that gets in through your nose, through your mouth, is going to hit the stomach. So if the stomach acid isn't strong enough, uh, you're kind of shafted at that point. So. And, and of course it being the beginning of the whole digestive system, so other things that we've talked about in, in other blogs that will be available at various points from candida and parasites and constipation, all these things can, if it's not working at the beginning, it's going to affect everything that's happening yeah, further absolutely. down. Um, yeah, so the, the other um, really important function of, of stomach acid is to actually trigger the pancreatic um, enzymes to be produced from the pancreas. Those are the things that digest um, the bits of food that don't get digested in the stomach. So um, if, if you don't have enough acid leaving the stomach to trigger the hormone that tells the pancreas to produce um, pancreatic juice with all the digestive enzymes, you have poor pancreatic function. So it's, it's, it's hugely important on so many levels that if the stomach acid is not right, you, you get a, an effect all the way down the gut. So what would be some of the, the more obvious symptoms someone would get from having low stomach acid? Okay, this is an area that's not very well understood by the medical profession either, unfortunately. But essentially, if you get um, bloating um, or flatulence or burping after food, that's generally a sign that your stomach acid is too low. The reason for that is that uh, the protein in your stomach isn't being broken down quick enough, so the carbohydrates that are in there um, start to ferment. And that fermentation produces carbon dioxide, that pushes your um, stomach acid up your esophagus, and you get that sort of acid reflux. Um, or you can literally just get the burping from the carbon dioxide, um, or flatulence later in the day. Um, so that, that's generally the feeling, and most people understand that, those sort of symptoms, as being high acid, and in fact it's the converse. And, often, and people often will take antacids and that Indeed. kind of thing to try and fix it, and often it just perpetuates the, the problem Indeed. they've got. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So how do we test to find out if someone's got low stomach acid? Well, that's the fun bit. Okay. <laughs> we have three ways of testing. Ty is aware of my great pleasure in burping fart and, and these kind of things. It's, it's, my, it's my inner child coming out in my, in my work. Yeah, so, so we have three ways of testing, um, and, and the cheapest to the, to the most expensive, and, and the easiest way, really, um, is to use um, bicarbonate of soda. So just your average bicarbonate of soda. Um, and we can do the bicarbonate burp test uh, with that. So essentially you just take a little bit of... Um, it's great fun at dinner parties, actually. <laughs> indeed. has to be on an empty stomach. Just a little bit um, in some water, just get it down into the stomach. Um, and on an empty stomach, essentially, the stomach acid should be pretty strong. Um, and the, um, the alkaline nature of the, the bicarb should react with the acid in order to produce carbon dioxide. So you'll either burp, or you'll get bloated, or you'll have fluctuance later. Sounds like fun. So that's, that, that, that's, that's the, the basic option. testing. Yeah. So that's the nice uh, cheap option and we often use that um, to, to keep an eye on things. Now, um, what should happen is you, you have quite a lot of um, belching, so not the sort of thing you'd want to be doing in public. Um, so or kind of you might want to do in public <laughs> <laughs> if you have a child right, like I do, but anyway. So, um, so most of our patients don't have any reaction to bicarb at all. Okay. And even non any patients um, quite often have no reaction to this at all. Which means they've got low stomach acid. Yeah. yeah. So it's a bit of a Heath Robinson method, but okay. you know it's a good cheap way of, of finding out you know ballpark what's going on. Um, then we have something called um, to give it a little bit more um, accuracy on it, something called the gastro test, which is essentially I won't be able to really show you because you can't see it, but it's essentially a capsule full of string and you, you pin the string onto your uh, side of your mouth, swallow the capsule which takes the string down into your stomach, sits in your stomach for about seven minutes, um, and then you 
the delightful bit is pulling the string back up again, and then you just develop um, the, the colour on the string. It's a pH sensitive piece of string, essentially. Um, and you can see specifically what your um, acid levels are in your stomach, all the way up to the esophagus, up to the mouth. Um, and that gives us a much clearer idea. There's a little colour chart that you can refer to. So you should be well down on the colour chart. And again, a lot of people are towards the, the alkaline or neutral levels, which is a bit of a disaster. <laughs> so that being how we would test for it, what do we do about it? Um, well, actually, it's, it's fairly simple. Um, what you basically have to do is, is artificially put in some hydrochloric acid, um, which you can put in in tablet liquid or, um, or capsule form. And, and that's really just to bolster the, the, the basic amount of stomach acid so that you can digest your food better. When you do that, you can actually absorb the minerals that you need to produce your own stomach acid. So we have kind of a dosing procedure where we increase the dose of stomach acid in order to do this, because everyone needs a different dose. Um, and once you start building that level up to an to a, to a almost normal point, then um, you just don't have to supplement anymore. It's really self-regulating. Um, the only problems we get sometimes if people have very, very low stomach acid, the mucus layer around the stomach, which protects the stomach from digesting itself, um, can be a little bit weak because it doesn't need to be strong because there's, the, there's no acid in there. Um, then we have to use other methods to actually um, soothe and heal the stomach wall um, before we put the acid in. But it's basically very straightforward. Okay, fantastic. Well, great. Thank you for your time. Hope that's been useful to people watching the video. Um, again, as I say at the end of these videos, if you're a patient in the clinic, then your practitioner will already be looking at this. If you want more information, information pack and a 15 minute chat is a great starting point. So thanks for watching. Thanks, Tanya. I look forward to speaking with you again soon.